G'day Groovy Humans and welcome to another episode of A Groovy Enlightened Life. Today we are talking about epigenetics. Now you might be sitting there wondering, firstly, WTF is epigenetics and you may also be sitting there wondering, what the hell does that have to do with what we talk about here at A Groovy Enlightened Life? Well, it's about helping us answer that fundamental question. Who am I really? It's a field of work that's just grown exponentially in recent times, and I find it absolutely fascinating, and I hope you find it fascinating. And today we are talking to the beautiful Kate Arthi, who is a health coach in this particular area of epigenetics. And we discuss everything from how finding out our biotype and understanding ourselves at that deeper biological, physical level can help us live more in alignment to our true selves and what that actually means for our wellness. So I hope you enjoy the episode today. Sit back, relax, and let's get cracking. Uh, welcome to the show, Kate. Thanks, Maya. So good to be with you. Yeah. So how about you just tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do? Sure. So uh, I am an epigenetics based health coach. And so to some people that might be like, what is that? Um, but basically um, I look at a person's gene expression. So how their genes are responding to their current environment and lifestyle and um, using some very smart health technology, we understand what their body needs in terms of the right environment and lifestyle to keep their genes happy. And then we go about like implementing those lifestyle changes in their life. And obviously that's where the coaching part comes along. So yeah, that's um, part of my day-to-day, week-to-week life. And then I'm also um, involved with the company that created the health technology um, on their on their team as well, helping the other health professionals that use this with their clients too. So um, supporting other health professionals in this space too. So that keeps me pretty busy. Oh, awesome, awesome. So I guess at a groovy and light life, we we like to talk about uh, living a life on purpose, living in alignment to our true selves, and everything mm-hmm. like that. And I guess I brought you on the show because I'm fascinated in the epigenetic, you know, health stuff and how that can actually help us understand who we are a little bit more. Can you talk a little bit about that? Sure. So obviously like within every body we have um, like, and what we've discovered basically is that we each have this like health code within us. And this is coming from your DNA, but also like I mentioned, your environment and lifestyle that's causing your genes to switch on and off at any moment but fundamentally there's this health code within each of us which we're now able to understand what an individual needs are for living a healthy lifestyle and you know I think we all you know it's kind of common sense that we all notice that we are different like there's no two human beings on the planet that are the same And so therefore it makes sense that we all need something different to be healthy. And so this idea of a one size fits all or even attempts at personalizing the approach to health, it really is so much deeper than that. And so when we talk about coming into alignment, alignment is going to look different for every single person as well. What alignment is for one person will be different to alignment for another person. And so that's where like the, f- the field of epigenetics and many other fields of science can really help us to personalize our approach to health and therefore really help us understand who we are, how we've been designed and put together, and therefore what we need um, to come into a place of physical alignment with how our body has been designed to function and therefore um, mental alignment, spiritual alignment as well, because as we know, it's all connected. They're not separate silos. What you think affects your body, how you feel affects your body and vice versa. And so, yeah, again, alignment 
in all these different areas is going to look different for everybody. And that's something we can now understand for each individual person and what that looks like and then go about helping someone to get in alignment. Yeah, that's that's just fascinating. I love how you described all that. I guess I've just a, a disclaimer, you know, I've done the PH360 health assessment mm. and worked with a coach. And one of the things I really loved about it was that it gave me permission to be myself. Mm. And it and I also built, I guess, an acceptance around that. You know, can you talk yeah. to that about some of the clients that you sort of work with? Yeah, absolutely. That that is something I definitely see is super common amongst many of my clients is this feeling of once they start to understand um, who they are and some of it is confirmation to what they already know or intuitively feel about themselves. And then some of it is a little bit left of field of what they've known or it answers a lot of questions that have been unanswered for them as to why I do some of the things I do or why I think the way that I think or why it's really hard for me to get out of bed early in the morning and get going like everybody else and why I need to sleep in or why I've never felt good doing exercise first thing in the morning. And so, you know, there's these certain societal, cultural ways of doing life that are, um, you know, common and people think, well, again, this is the way you should be doing life, this one size fits all. And, you know, some of those common things are, you know, um, we hear some of the common phrases, the early bird catches the worm or no pain, no gain. And some of these terms are relevant for some people, but for other people, they are the opposite of what they need and what is best for them and how their body has been designed to function, particularly for the people where um, what they need and what is best for them and how their body has been designed is the opposite to what society is saying or what culture is dictating or what we've been conditioned to think. When are they the opposite to what they need? And you say to someone, well, actually you do need a slow, steady start to the morning as an example they finally have this, like they have a bit of a weight lift off their shoulders, like, oh God, like that's awesome. I, I can have a slow start or sleep in and not feel lazy, whether someone's told them they're lazy or not. Like sometimes people say that to you and obviously that's not very nice. Yep. Or you even think that yourself if you're that person. And you just think because society is saying I should be doing this, but actually I'm feeling this. You know, and that's just one example. There's so many others I could go into. But yeah, it's like you said, they then have this permission to first, I think, comes the understanding of who they are, then comes the permission of, well, I can just be myself now that I know this about me. I don't have to follow the next trendy thing or, you know, follow the next diet out there or whatever it is. I know me and I can just do me and stay in my lane and not have to look left or right. And along with having the permission, I think another big area that comes with that is this reduction in the noise, you know, of people saying you should do this or this is good for you or this diet is good or you should be meditating one hour a day or whatever it is, right, or the shoulds the one size fits all approaches, you know, when, again, when you understand who you are, you can just block out all the noise. And, you know, when someone who's very well-meaning maybe says to you, oh, you should do this, you can go, oh, no, I know what I'm doing and this is what's best for me. Um, Or you can just nod and smile and say, thank you, (laughs) (laughs) whatever it is, you know. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. there's there's this understanding of who you are, a permission to be who you are. And um, yeah, just (laughs) blocking out of a lot of the the noise so you can just, you know, focus your mental efforts on the the areas that you really want to be focusing on. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's great. Yeah. So you did, you know, you've mentioned that there's, there is a lot of information out there and it's not for everybody. 
So besides obviously, you know, going down the epigenetic path of health, Mm. is there any other, I guess, advice or tips or tricks you can help people with to clear out all that clutter and, and to focus on what's, you know, important to them? It really does come back to understanding who you are. Like I touched on, there's particularly the people, type of people that are listening to your podcast. And I feel like we'll have a level of intuition with some things and that's awesome. Like there'll definitely some areas where you can just, when you're at that still place. Um, And also I really think when you're not attached to a certain way, like, What I mean by that is I know for me sometimes if I really want to get the truth to something, I have to like give up what I think might be the answer Mm -hmm. and be open to receiving um, the truth for me as Mm -hmm. opposed to uh, my biased opinion on whatever it is. So, um, yeah, I think when I get to that still place and then um, I'm looking for guidance and I'm open to whatever the answer may be, you know, like you can a lot of the time really get quite accurate on what it is that might be good for you. The thing I find is the problem with that sometimes is that there are so many variables that come into play with regards to your health and the right environment for you and um, coming into alignment. Like, and, and this is part of uh, why the platform I use was developed because the human brain actually cannot compute all the different variables that um, are, need to be considered. Like it's impossible. And so, you know, and you think about, every single thing you see around you, every thought you think, you know, absolutely every aspect needs to be considered when understanding, well, how do I live my best life and create the best environment for me? There is so many variables. And so, (laughs) you know, I think if we were maybe, you know, a monk living in the Himalayas with zero stress and zero distraction and clean, fresh air. And maybe we could just completely live on intuition and go about our life and um, be fully guided in every single moment, but that's not the life that most people live. And so definitely um, intuition is a, is a great tool that we can use. Um, But I've definitely found with a lot of my clients too that sometimes it's a little tweak left of field of what their intuition is guiding them to. And then once they explore that, then they realize, oh, that actually does feel right and fit right, but I never saw it in that way or from that perspective before. Um, And, you know, sometimes we have our own blocks and are blinded by things. And that's where like a coach and someone else coming in from a different angle and going, Hey, what about this? And, and this is what we know about your body. You know, if you were to try this, how did, what do you think about that? Yeah. So yeah. So definitely intuition is one thing, but I have this bit of a disclaimer around that. What other tips can I give you? Like I mentioned a couple of others, like I think You know, if you're someone that has never really been a morning person and you feel like, you know, it's just hard work to get going in the morning, then you're probably not a morning person. (laughs) Yeah. And therefore, like, for example, we know for those types of people, afternoon exercise is best for them to be. And that's the best time of day for them to be moving. And these types of people slowly increase with energy throughout the day. And so... Um, they're more creative at night as well and and are naturally night owls a bit because of that and then some people I find too that are this type of person they've just conditioned themselves to be getting up early for so many years that they've now in that routine but it might not be necessarily what's ideal for them because they've just been doing it for so long and your body's good at adapting to things yeah And again, this is where if you really want to know 100%, we need to 
assess your gene expression. So, but that, the, that's a common one I find is this, you know, sleeping in the slow, steady start to the day type of person. And then I'll talk about maybe the opposite type of person, um, which is like me, natural early bird. And it's kind of the opposite energy rhythm where they have naturally high energy in the morning and then slowly peter off throughout the day. Um, these types of people um, are generally better with like higher intensity type rhythm of life. But because they can do the higher intensity, they then are not quite very good at resting. And so they're just constantly at this high level of energy all day long. And then often we find these people are quite susceptible to burnout, adrenal fatigue, these types of things. And so this is something I had to learn about the rhythm and flow of my body is that, yes, I can do the high intensity, but then I need to rest as hard as I have energy going out. And so the rhythm in my day will look like a peak of energy and then, okay, just some downtime. And then I can go again, up again, and then I need to recharge again. And so it's more like this up, down, up, down of energy and I find um yeah so if you think you're this high energy type of person having these little intermittent short breaks of recharging throughout your day is going to do so much for you in terms of sustaining your energy long term and um, also you're going to be a more like a 10 o'clock bedtime person and then more rise with the sun so not staying up too late is is good for you so there's some probably common tips that I can give um, without you know generalizing too much yeah, yeah. <laughs> and not knowing what they actually are from a, exactly yeah yeah. yeah yeah no that's good uh, so let's talk a bit about location like how that mm. you know, our environment and where we either physically live or, mm. or within our own houses or where we work and stuff like can you talk a little bit about how that affects us sure so one of the common um sayings that i hear like if you've been around like the personal development area for a while um or even like the business fields for a while you probably would have heard um, this idea that uh, your environment creates who you are, mm-hmm. you know, and that is very much so true on, again, on all those different levels that I've talked about, the physical, mental, emotional, spiritual level. And so, you know, we know how important it is to surround ourselves with the type of people that are going to you know, inspire us and lift us up and make us feel good as opposed to the energy zappers and drainers and those kind of things. So, you know, people is just one aspect of the environment that you're in. Um, There's so many others, like you mentioned, the location that you live. So if we're talking just about, you know, Australia, um, whether you're living in far north Queensland or whether you're living down south in in Victoria obviously very different climates and we know that certain body types are more conducive to a warm climate as opposed to a cold environment or we know somebody some bodies are affected by altitude and windy environments Um, we know that some body types need wide open spaces nature trees fresh air Um, we know that other body types can do better in cities you know location of where you live definitely comes into play I've seen uh, client histories where you know they were living in a colder climate moved to a warmer climate and their chronic conditions immediately changed and that was the only thing they changed so we see that very very often there's not only like the temperature aspect of where you live it's but it's also like what you're visually seeing so you know some ways that you can impact that like if you're the type of person that needs um the wide open spaces nature forest this kind of scenario and you live in a city you can even you know have a big beautiful picture in your office or your bedroom or your living room of that type of a landscape And we know that even a picture will go um, 
will definitely have some benefit. Obviously, it's not as great as the real thing, yep. but it definitely helps having plants in your home, these kinds of things. But then there's this um, aspect of body temperature that is not really talked about a lot in health. We know is so, so important to really maintaining alignment in the body. It's If we want to talk about it more in a physical term, it's about maintaining homeostasis in the body, mm. which is, you know, another word for that is balance in the body. So your body is constantly trying to calibrate and recalibrate you into balance and into homeostasis. And that's what a lot of your body's energy and resources are going towards maintaining. And that's why some other priorities in the body, like hair, skin, nails, etc., they're important, but they're not urgent and life-saving. So sometimes they'll get left to last because your body is too busy putting resources and recalibrating other things, for example. Yep. Ultimately, if we're looking at keeping the body in homeostasis or balance or alignment, it's meaning that we're trying to keep the body in the least amount of stress to promote health. And so there are certain environments that are going to stress some bodies in different ways and that are going to keep a body um, nice and relaxed um, as well. Uh, I've mentioned home. I've mentioned even like in your home, for some bodies, we know that like not having a lot of clutter around the house is important for their body to feel peace. We know even the types of materials in the house, like whether they're lots of natural, soft furnishings and things like this, as opposed to like hard stone, stark um, color is also an impact of your environment. So that's just in your home. It can be in your workplace as well, in your office. PH360, you've mentioned who I'm working with, we're now going into like the corporate um, space because we know how important these environmental impacts are. Lighting, you know, um, whether you have like a lot of blue artificial light or whether you have a lot of natural light coming into the office um, will affect different people in different ways. When you go outside for your lunch break and all these different things. You know, I mentioned people as well. We know certain types of social interactions as part of your environment is impacting you where you exercise, whether it's indoors, outdoors, and the temperature at the time you're exercising, the time of day you're exercising, you know, because you can see I'm talking about the variables yeah. before that there's so many to consider. So I think they're the main ones though. Yeah, no, that's, that's great. And I like how you introduce the workplace stuff because a lot of people don't get a choice on what their workplace is like, generally their location or what their office is or the setup of the office. And, and yeah, I, often see, you know, people that, that itself, just that location, that environment that they're in is actually causing a lot of the stress and strain um, or discomfort um, that they're experiencing the workplace, which is leading, you know, people to not like their jobs or want to leave their workplace and things like that. So I just find it really amazing, this body of work, because it's, I think it's shining a spotlight on some of this, you know, more detailed stuff to say, hey, we're not, when we don't have it right yet, but we could get it right. We could get it better. Yeah. And I, what I see a lot and have seen over my time in the health space too, is that we're often so focused on diet and exercise yeah. being the two main pillars that are contributing to health or if we're wanting to change health. But, you know, we've just talked about environment, all the different aspects of that. And there's so much more to consider. Mm. And um, you'd think that makes it more complicated, which it does if we didn't have the technology we now have, but um, yeah, so important. And, and like you said, um, sometimes you don't have a choice over the type of work environment you're in. And so, and this may be similar to other aspects of your life. Like when I was talking about needing to sleep in in the morning, if you're a mum with young children, sometimes that's going to be really difficult. So there's always a way to create the intention of what we're trying to do um, in the best way possible for whatever's going on for you at the moment. Like I said, if you're in an office environment where you can't really change much, putting a picture of a nice landscape 
as your backdrop on your screen or having a picture there or putting a plant on your desk or, you know, there's so many little things you can do. Um, another one of my clients who's a nurse who she's the type of body who needs to be at this steady, relaxed state. You know, she's learned to use alpha waves. That's probably another tip I could have added in there that people can really do to keep them relaxed is just Google alpha waves on Spotify or YouTube. And this helps to keep your brain in this alpha state, which is cognizant state, but very relaxed and chilled. And so we know for certain body types, this is the state that they need to be in as much as possible throughout their life and their day, um, regardless of whatever activity they're doing. And so for her as a nurse, a very high stressful job and, and environment, uh, work environment, and her body needing to be in this alpha relaxed state, she would listen to these alpha waves driving to work, walking into work. All her colleagues started to notice how more relaxed she was. And they're like, what are you doing? What are you listening to? That's amazing. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. And then she, um, they started, she started playing the, the waves over the PA so everyone else in the office could hear. And one really amazing thing that happened is she had a patient who had, uh, who was having uh, high blood pressure. The doctor wanted to give him medication for that, she said. And she chatted to him so she kind of knew he was a similar body type to her needing this steady state. And she said to the doctor, oh, can you just give me five minutes? And she put the alpha waves on for him. The doctor came back in five minutes and his blood pressure had come down. Wow. So there's a, a perfect example of how your environment can impact mm -hmm. your state and therefore how if you're in alignment or not. Wow, that's amazing. Mm. Do you have any other stories like that to share around, you know, people who have, you know, they've found out their body type, um, they've, you know, accepted it, started to come into alignment with it and, and had some changes? I think like the first one that comes to mind is kind of that commonly happens is uh, because sometimes the changes can be so insidious that you know that's they're, they're so small and it's like a combination of so many little tweaks that you've done all add up and when you're doing it over time sometimes hard to notice but what I commonly see is when people stop doing all those little things that they were doing and then they notice that oh I'm more stressed I'm not sleeping as well my digestion is sluggish and I feel heavy in the stomach. My skin is not so great. Um, I snapped at my partner, which I ha was I wasn't doing for so long. Like lots of these little things, I start to notice. And again, sometimes it's not until we're in a coaching session and and I'm getting them to reflect on their week or the last two weeks, and they're like, oh yeah. The, this this has been happening and that's been happening and I'm like oh and how's your digestion and how's your energy and how's your sleep and, and they start to put the pieces of the puzzle together and they're like oh yeah when I was listening to my alpha waves um, I was a lot calmer and I stopped doing that and that's why I'm not feeling as good oh that's right I need to go back to that habit yeah I find it's it's a lot of the time is when people, you know, that whole, the grass is greener on the other mm. side. It's like some people, particularly for people who are not like chronically ill or don't have any major health con concerns. Um, it's sometimes not until you stop doing all the good things that are right for you, that you notice that you weren't feeling so good yeah. before. Yeah. Um, but now that you are doing it, you feel so much better than you did. Yeah. And I think it's, I think it's about um, developing that, I guess they call it mindfulness or an awareness of what's really going on for you, because I can, you know, share my story is that I was in the workplace and I ignored everything. I ignored that I wasn't feeling that well or that I was suffering and my health was getting worse. And I find, you know, people can do that. We have this resilience to, to just push that stuff aside. And then, like you said, it's not until we reflect and actually take the time out to say, hey, what's really going on for me that we actually can pick up, oh, well, actually, I'm not in alignment to what I should be or where I want mm. to be. 
and things yeah, like that. Yeah, a hundred percent. And there's two really important things that you, you've touched on there. And uh, the first one is the body is so amazing at adapting to something and, a, and an environment for so long until we kind of reach this tipping point, you know, and um, that's where we really notice with some people, they, you know, we, they, they think, oh, I'm healthy. I thought I was healthy, but then this sudden thing happened. Well, actually it's been developing over time and your body's just been adapting and coping and so I find, yeah, most people are living in this like survival um, state because their body is just dealing with it. But when we, you know, are quiet and we can actually listen or say to people, you know, your body will start whispering at you um, little symptoms and signs and things. And if you don't listen to the whispers, it will start yelling because it's this is feedback for us to start coming back into alignment um and then the the other thing which i've forgotten <laughs> that's okay <laughs> oh i can't remember now <laughs> but um and this is one thing i know about my brain i used to like get really down on myself about this but you know the saying ducks in a row well, my brain's more like i've learned uh is more like squirrels at a rave Right. And so it's like, <laughs> idea, oh, shiny, idea over here. And so I'm very good at going on tangents. But so to do the linear thinking thing for me and my brain takes effort. <laughs> well, thank and, you for your effort. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I love your like really casual, relaxed style of conversation. <laughs> you could chat all day. So um, yeah, I love, I love that. It makes me at ease as well. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, this, um, like you said, the body is so good at, at putting up the things until it, you know, can't take it anymore. Oh, that's something I was going to say. <laughs> so see, anyway, there it is. um, is like being the observer of what is going on. And like you said, when you come into a place of mindfulness and awareness, you are able to step into that place of observing. And this is one of the key things, if I could teach all of my clients this tool or strategy or skill that they could take into the rest of their lives, is all about observing the cause and effect of what you're doing mm. in your life, like if you're trying to work on your health. And so... It's, it's all about what you do and the ability to reflect without judgment mm -hmm. on what you're doing. And, there, and that's, again, why it's so beneficial to have a coach or even a good friend or a small group or whatever it is that works for you that you can just sound out sometimes some of these things or you might journal about it or whatever it is, but you're having this objective observation or review about well, what are the behaviors and habits that are leading me to this effect in my body or this outcome? What's the formula that's creating this? And therefore, we can then work out, well, what's the habits and behaviors and the formula that's going to create to help me get to where I want to be? So then, you know, when things happen or you, you know, like a, a common one, I had with a client recently is, you know, she just can't understand why she's in this loop of eating crap when she's not feeling good and she doesn't want to be doing it. And she's sick of this conversation in her head or back and forth about it all. And so, you know, what we really had to do is, is separate that by stepping into the observer role and going, well, that's not you. That's that, thing that you it's just the thing that you do it's not who you are yep. and so bringing this awareness and mindfulness to the situation and you know if you want to break any kind of negative behavioral loop you really need to do two things one is step into the observer role and two is and in doing that you separate the behavior or the negative story from you 
because it's not who you are. It's just that story and you can then start to identify, well, when this story gets the best of me, this is what happens. And so when those things happen, you can go, when you do eat crap or whatever it is, you can go, oh, that's that not good enough story or whatever it is. That's that story at play. That's not who I am. That's just that story at play. So you don't have to keep going in the negative loop. And then on the other side, you can actually look at, well, what's this, the story I do want to have for my life and what happens when that's at play? But yeah, going into a whole other topic there. <laughs> no, that's fantastic advice. Fantastic. So I guess thanks for sharing today um, no on the problem. show, your stories and spending time with us. I guess, uh, do you have any final words or words of wisdom or tips or tricks you'd like to share with everybody today? Uh, I think probably one of the biggest things, if I could say any one thing is to know yourself I think once that's probably one of the biggest fundamental underlying things that has impacted me personally and my clients as well is once you start to know yourself and understand yourself you can really start to have so much more compassion for yourself and not be so hard on yourself and not take life so seriously and have fun and you know it's just know and understand yourself and in doing that um and particularly with the work i do in realizing that we're we are all very different when you start to know yourself you understand that um okay not everybody is like me you know everybody is different and you can really start to appreciate the differences in others rather than judging yeah um which is so easy to go into like i'm not jesus or Buddha, you know i definitely <laughs> go into that sometimes but that's personally yeah. what i've found is um being a a result of starting to know and understand myself better therefore understanding that other people are not not everyone is seeing the world the same way that i do um and therefore appreciating that others and each person has their unique thing to bring to the world and that if we all got into alignment and brought that unique thing to the world it'd be a pretty awesome place (laughs) amen to that (laughs) amen Mm. well done so thank you thank you very much for being here my pleasure well, I'm not sure if you could tell, but Kate and I absolutely love recording that episode. We got into this beautiful flow state and we reflected on that after the interview and we were sitting there going, wow, oh, what happened? What just happened right now? And, you know, we, we came to the realization that we are both really, really passionate about the work that we do separately, but there's this overlapping piece around really wanting to help people discover who they, are, they truly are and living in alignment to that. And I think that was the piece that we just got into this beautiful flow state with. And uh, yeah, it was, a, it was a magical dance and I really, really enjoyed my time uh, interviewing Kate. If you are interested in epigenetics or what Kate gets up to in the world, head over to sagacityrising.com forward slash A-G-E-L 006. Over there, you'll find some show notes, uh, some information about Kate and all the links for you to get in touch with her. And if you want to continue this conversation around epigenetics and finding purpose and meaning in life through that method, head over to tribe.agrivianlightenlife.com and come and join us over there. Thank you once again for taking time out of your life to listen to the podcast today. Stay groovy, my friends. Maya out.